All right, here we are for another one. This is an efficiency test in the Tesla Model Y long range, and we are going to go 70 miles per hour today for this test. And actually, I'm gonna go ahead and do the 80 mile per hour test as well, but that's probably gonna be a separate video uh, for that test, but we're gonna go 70 miles per hour today, and the weather is very similar to our test when we did the 60 mile per hour test. So I think it's gonna be a pretty good comparison to that test. Today, the weather is 52 degrees. And we got, I, I'm gonna go ahead and add some more stats uh, to the list of things that we're gonna track for each one of these efficiency drives, because obviously there are other factors in how efficient you're gonna be uh, traveling at the various speeds. Uh, so the wind is from the south at a maximum of two miles per hour. So pretty calm, not very much wind today. It's uh, pretty nice and partly cloudy. So it's it's not it's not too bad today. It's a pretty nice day actually. And the humidity is 65%, pretty normal for Georgia. And the dew dew point is uh, 41 degrees. Honestly, I don't I don't know if that really <laughs> matters for anything, but. Here it is. And the barometric pressure, 29.83. Again, I don't really know what that means as far as uh, how it's gonna impact the drive, but nevertheless, those are the stats. I'm gonna go ahead and put those in to a chart so that any future uh, efficiency tests that we have, we can do a comparison and see if some of these other things have a, a bigger impact than maybe we thought. Uh, Temperature and speed, I think, are the two biggest things, two biggest factors, and today we're hopefully going to get a good gauge of the difference between the speed because I'm pretty sure most of these other things are similar to our 60 mile per hour test. So today the big question is how much less efficient is the Model Y at 70 miles per hour and 80 miles per hour? We're going to do the same nice loop, a 64 mile loop for each test. Uh, one at 70 miles per hour and one at 80 miles per hour. Again, I will do the results for the 80 miles per hour trip on a separate video coming up later this week. But for now, we're just going to do the 70 miles per hour test. And again, it's it's going to be the same route each time. So the 60 mile per hour test, we did the 64 miles, the 70 mile per hour test, and the 80 mile per hour test. And actually, I do intend to do these tests again with the Model 3 as well. To see how it compares, uh, it's hard to actually do all of the tests in a similar condition. So obviously I will track the temperature conditions and all that for each one of the tests to make sure that we have a nice chart that we can kind of review later and see what factors there might be for the efficiency. But I think 70 miles per hour, that's the most uh, relevant test to what I would normally use for a road trip. Normally gonna be going 70 miles per hour or so. That's basically the majority of the time that's the speed limit so that's usually the, the speed that we go on road trips now sometimes we go a little faster so i don't know maybe the 80 mile per hour test would be uh interesting the 60 mile per hour test was really just to see uh how much more efficiency you could get out of it if say you were worried about how far you were <laughs> needing to go to the destination of the next charger you could uh lower your speed to 60 miles per hour and hopefully get a pretty good uh, range with that. So I do expect this to be a uh, much worse efficiency at 70 miles per hour. And I would be curious at 70 miles per hour how that compares to the EPA efficiency. So we are going to find that out today. And as always, if you like this video, please make sure you give it a thumbs up. It helps others find it. And if you're not already subscribe for more like this and let's get started. Uh, 
uh, PSI, so it did start at 42, so nice and warm. And we tried to warm up the battery a little bit. Um, I already put about eight miles on here. So we should be pretty good for starting this test. And as soon as we get to the sign up there, I'm gonna go ahead and hit reset here on the trip meter. I've got it labeled north 70 miles per hour. It is going to be a little bit more challenging to stick with 70 miles per hour, but hopefully we'll be able to do it. I'll try to get around anybody that's going slow and that sort of thing. And reset it right there. Alright, so that will start the test and in, uh, well, hopefully it's 32 miles. Yeah, it should be 13 miles there uh, to exit 306. That's what we're going to do. Turn around and go south and reset it from there. That'll do it for the run, and I will go ahead and do some numbers after this and post those. But overall, uh, it was a little bit worse than I was expecting, but uh, it's probably not going to be nearly as bad as the 80 mile per hour. So 
we'll check back and see how that goes. All right, so sorry, it has been a few more days than I was hoping before I got these results out in a video, and I'm still working on the 80 mile per hour test, but these are the results here from the 70 mile per hour test, and I will be doing the 80 mile per hour test uh, video results next week, so stay tuned for that. Definitely stay subscribed if you wanna check that out, and I will also put a link to the 60 mile per hour test that is the closest relation to this test. I didn't do the 60 mile per hour test again in the same day. Uh, and so I don't have all the stats, but I wanted to go over some comparison here from that test. So you can just get the numbers from that to compare to the 70 mile per hour test. For the 60 mile per hour test, we did 195 watt hours per mile northbound, 250 southbound, 222.5 wires per mile overall average, which was much worse than I was expecting, but that results in almost exactly what the EPA uh, range is expected for the Model Y. It is 326 expected, so we would have gotten 325.84 miles based on that efficiency. So basically at 50, uh, 50 to 55 degrees Fahrenheit, you need to go around 60 miles per hour to get the full EPA range, uh, which is actually, you know, pretty expected because EPA, you know, that's it's a city highway mix and it's obviously less efficient at higher speeds. Um, so 326 uh, full range at 60 miles per hour is actually not bad at all. Um, but for a normal road trip, we normally go 70 miles per hour and the results for that are 242 watt hours per mile northbound, 267 southbound, and averaged out 255.5 watt hours per mile for an expected range at 100% battery of 283.76 or rounded up 284 miles. I did put a little chart together here that shows uh, the difference in efficiency between 60 mile per hour and 70 mile per hour again at the uh, around 55 degrees uh, temperature. I did track the temperature for the 60 mile per hour test, but not uh, anything else other than tire pressure at the 60 mile per hour test. So that was something that you all commented on and suggested that I include some more details. So for the 70 mile per hour test, I did include the barometric pressure here, the dew point, the humidity and the wind. Wind, I do think, is obviously a very uh, impactful uh, metric. If it was very windy, which I do think it was windy on the day that I did the 60 mile per hour test, so we might have done better than uh, that. But I also think that it is interesting that there was a 55 watt hour disparity, uh, watt hour per mile disparity between the north and southbound trip on the 60 mile per hour run because that is pretty heavy, a pretty large difference between those two. Uh, whereas on the 70 mile per hour one, it was only a difference of 27 watt hours per mile, which is actually more, more so what I was kind of expecting. It is uh, basically uh, you're going a little bit downhill for the uh, northbound and a little bit uphill for the southbound, but obviously it averages out. But I think what this does show is that there's probably a lot of that wind resistance that comes into play for the 70 mile per hour uh, test that did not come into play as much at the 60 mile per hour test. So that overcame the, uh, I guess I would say the elevation change. So the factor of elevation change uh, was outweighed, I think, by the speed or wind resistance that we incurred from going 70 versus 60. So overall, pretty interesting. I thought 284 miles at 100% uh, charge is definitely respectable. I uh, That would be the speed that I would normally go on most road trips and therefore represents what we would normally do for road trips, probably get around 280 miles on a full charge. And, you know, you usually charge after like 150 miles, 200 miles, uh, superchargers are, are pretty convenient, especially if you get over 200 miles on a charge, 
they get pretty convenient at that at that point because you just stop you know like you're gonna go to the bathroom or something you stop the supercharger so it's pretty convenient but overall what did you think did you expect it to be uh let's see 40 42 miles uh range difference uh between going 60 and 70 miles per hour or were you expecting a little bit uh a little bit better result there uh i will say i expect the 80 mile per hour test to be significantly worse in fact i i haven't uh gone back to look at the numbers and put that in here but i'm pretty sure it is uh significantly worse um, so we'll check that out and I'll do that in the next video. So again, thanks so much for watching and make sure you hit the thumbs up and like this video and subscribe for the next test and we'll see you on the next one.